ever tried boiling water to make a cup of tea and wondered why the water takes so long to come to a boil? Or in contrast, have you ever had a metal pan on the stove and wonder how it gets so hot so fast? Well, the reason why these materials exhibit these behaviors is because of something called their specific heat capacities. Specific heat capacity is a property unique to every material and is a measure of that material's ability to store heat. It can be thought of as a thermal inertia. You know, inertia. Objects in motion tend to remain in motion and objects at rest tend to stay at rest. Well, if we consider these kinds of mechanical systems, we know that for two objects moving at the same speed, the more massive object has more inertia and will therefore take much longer to slow down than the less massive object. This argument can be extended to talk about thermal systems as well. So for the same amount of two substances that have been heated to a certain temperature, then with a higher thermal inertia, so a higher specific heat capacity, will take longer to heat up and longer to cool down. So if we prefer to take a more quantitative perspective, we can define a material's specific heat capacity as the amount of heat, which we measure in joules, required to raise one kilogram of the material by one degree Kelvin. For example, pure gold has a spe specific heat capacity of 126 joules per kilogram Kelvin, meaning that it takes 126 joules of heat to raise a kilogram of pure gold by a single degree Kelvin. Several known metals in their purest forms have specific heats between 100 and 500 joules per kilogram Kelvin. For example, the specific heat of silver is 233 joules per kilogram Kelvin, and the specific heat of copper is 386 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Now these numbers might seem a little large to you. However, they're actually pretty small amounts of energy compared to what it takes to raise the temperature of other substances. This is especially evident when compared to water, which has the enormous specific heat capacity of 4,186 joules per kilogram Kelvin. That is nearly 36 times higher than the heat capacity of gold. So it takes 4,186 joules of heat to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Kelvin. And similarly, you must remove 4,186 joules to lower a kilogram of water by one degree Kelvin. No wonder it takes so much longer to heat up a kilogram of water as opposed to a kilogram of a metal called gold. And the higher the water content of a substance, the closer its heat capacity will be to that of water. That's why things like soup, coffee, or a cup of tea take longer to heat up and cool down compared to metal objects like the pans and kettles you use to heat them. That's pretty neat. So the next time you're cooking with your family or having tea with friends and you want to talk about science, as you do, tell them about the specific heat capacity of whatever you're eating or drinking and get them interested as well.